In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Hayes' randomization syntax in SPSS in order to test the difference between two between subjects means. And so, as I mentioned in the textbook, randomization is a procedure that doesn't assume any level of normality. And I also describe more in more detail in the chapter devoted to correlation that the randomization procedure can be used in such a way that it doesn't even assume random sampling. Although exactly what you're inferring your results to might not be exactly what you want in most cases, but in some cases it might be totally fine. So I encourage you to read the chapter on correlation to learn more about the distinction between randomization and bootstrapping. In this case, in this video, I'm just going to show you how to use the syntax for testing the difference between two between subjects means. The first thing I'm going to point out is that the data file that you want to test has to be specified a certain way. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate the randomization technique with the glasses and perceived IQ study data, which you might recall me using to test the difference between the two means with just a regular independent sample t-test. And I had the dependent variable perceived intelligence as the first column and glasses as the second column. And so that's the grouping variable. Well, when you use the randomization syntax, you actually have to flip things around. You actually have to make sure that the independent variable, x, is the first variable, and you have to code it 1 and 2. The y variable, the dependent variable, I should say, has to be labeled y. So if you follow the way the syntax is written and don't change it, you have to make sure your data set is consistent with those prescriptions. And so here's my x variable, which is grouping, and I've recoded it so that it's ones and twos rather than zeros and ones. You need to do that to run the syntax successfully as it's written. And then the dependent variable, which is perceived intelligence, is my y variable, and it's the second column. So independent variable first column and dependent variable second column. The second thing you need to take into consideration in addition to specifying your variables and columns correctly is you have to make sure that the data file is pulled or referenced correctly. And so you can't just have the data file open and run the syntax, at least that hasn't worked for me. You have to have the file specification, the directory and the file name uh, in this row here. So for me, I put the data file in drive G and this is the name of the data file glasses underscore IQ underscore randomization dot SAV dot SAV is an SPSS data file and then close the um, close the uh, quotation mark and we have the period here so the uh, that's probably all you need to know you just have to specify those two things uh, I would keep uh, the maximum loops at 10,000 that should be the maximum I think you should ever need uh, and otherwise, uh, I've got the number of permutations here, which is uh, 1,000. I'm actually going to put it as 2,000, actually, because I think 2,000 is even better. You probably won't need 2,000, much more than 2,000 usually. Uh, so let me just click Save on that. And otherwise, everything else should be uh, ready to go. I will point out that it will save another data file of sorts uh, in... Uh, the G drive, you have to specify an appropriate drive that actually exists in your computer and it's going to store results in there and so you need to have that specified correctly as well and here it is again you need a, a specification for this permanent distribution to be specified. You don't actually necessarily uh, need these results uh, I think you could run the syntax without it but it's probably best just to have it uh, set up the way it was written. Okay, so now that I've got the data set up and I've got the syntax file, uh, I think, correctly specified, uh, I'm going to click Run. So let's run this and see what we get. It's going to take a little while for it to run all 2,000 uh, permutations, or randomizations, and we can see here that the first result is actually just a regular uh, independent sample uh, t-test, which we've covered before in a previous section of this chapter, 
where we're testing the difference between 4.03 and 4.43. I don't have the labels because I actually switched it from 0 to 1 to 1 to 2. So these labels kind of uh, no longer exist in a consistent way. But that's irrelevant to this analysis. And we can see the p-value is 0 0.026, which I covered before in a previous video. Now here's the actual randomization. It's also known as a permutation test. They're basically synonymous. And you can see, you can see that I get an obtained t-value of negative 2.263, which is identical to this one. That's no different. The randomization procedure is not going to calculate a different t-value. It, what it's doing is calculating another sampling distribution based on your raw data permuted 2,000 different times. Again, I encourage you to read the chapter on correlation where I describe uh, bootstrapping and randomization in more detail. Now you get the two-tailed p-value and it's telling you it's an approximate estimate. Even Hayes admits that his procedure only gives approximate results. I think it's actually probably pretty close to, it's very accurate in the sense that um, you will get very close to what is an actual value, uh, an actual p-value from this randomization technique. And the key point for the randomization procedure is to get a p-value. Now it's a little bit tricky because the way it's reported is that it says the number, basically what I'll show you down here is the histogram of the sampling distribution of the t-values. And when you do a randomization technique, you'll, I my, to my understanding, you'll always get a zero or near zero mean of t values. So it's run the analysis 2,000 times with 2,000 different permutations of the data. And this is the sampling distribution of those t's. And now, because there are 2,000 of them, it's really quite a nice normal distribution of uh, t values. And the procedure is estimating uh, the percentage of t values that are greater than 2.2627, which is the obtained t value. Uh, in terms of absolute values, and only 1.85% uh, are actually greater than 2.2627, and only exactly 1.85% uh, are less than negative 2.262. And so to get the two-tailed p-value, you've got to actually add or sum these two p-values together, and we get 0 0.0185 plus 0 0.0185 and we get a p-value, a randomization-based p-value, which does not assume any level of normality and arguably doesn't even assume any random sampling. We get 0 0.037, which is similar to the p-value we got here, but it is larger. It is a larger p-value than the one I got here. So it's a different estimation technique with fewer assumptions. Now, it's not always going to be exactly the same percentages here in this sampling procedure it came out exactly the same you can run the analysis again with a thousand or two thousand or three thousand and you'll get slightly different percentages that you're summing across the two tails and these are the two that you have to sum so i've rejected the null hypothesis of equal means using this randomization procedure using hayes's test which i think is a useful piece of syntax to know about and it's not very difficult to execute Little bit of little bit of work, but not too onerous, and certainly quite a unique feature because I don't think SPSS will ever produce this in a menu-driven way.